to welcome you here this afternoon. We have the Department of Family, and uh, I'm just glad to be here today to celebrate the life of Rival Department. I want to invite you to come and stand with me as we get sing. Before we do, I would just like to say a prayer. Father, we just thank you for this day that we can gather together. To remember the life of Rhino, to celebrate together who he was. Lord, we thank you that we can gather together and we can just remember him. Father, we thank you that you are alive in him. And that today he walks with you. We pray, Lord, this morning, or this afternoon for the family. Pray for Mario as well. And I say you bring peace. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. In your handout, in your bulletin, you have uh, uh, a few song sheets there. Uh, a few songs. We'll be starting with In Christ Alone. You can follow along with us. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fears is proud and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still and striving cease. I come for her, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, stored by the ones he gave to save. Thank you. 
So I introduce to you uh, Rymus' younger brother, Reina Barbaran, from Mississauga, Ontario. And he's going to say a few words in Finnish. And I'm trying to translate. So I am, I'm not the translator, so it might be that I have to ask some Finnish people some words if I get stuck. But anyway, I try my best. I can say something in English too, but I like you people to hear beautiful language of Finnish. So that's the reason I like to speak Finnish. Minun veljeni Raimo oli minun kahdeksan vuotta vanhemmin. My brother Raimo was eight years older than I. Kun minä synnyin, Raimo oli jo siis kahdeksan vuotta. Eli aika iso poika. When I was born, Raimo was already a big boy, about eight years old, so he was much bigger than us. Ensimmäiset muistot Raimosta on neljä vuotta suurin piirtein sen jälkeen, kun minä syntyin. The first memories of Raimo is about four years after I was born. Eli voin sanoa, että minä olen tuntenut Raimo kaikkein kauemmin kuin kukaan teistä. So I would say that I have known Raimo the, uh, the longest than any one of you. Probably some know that we were not only uh, uh, family aunts um, children in the family. Meitä oli kaiken There's all together nine children. Minä olen sieltä I'm from the middle from that siblings. Ja nyt meitä on pois jo kolme. And now three from uh, these uh, uh, sisters of ours has gone to be with the Lord. Yeah. So the family is getting smaller. Mutta me but one day we go to the same uh, feast. Minä muistan, kun on täällä seitsemän vuotta. I remember when I was, uh, uh, I was seven years old, or my birthday, seventh birthday. Ja menin ensimmäistä päivää kouluun. And I went to school first day. Ja Raimo oli se, joka minun vei sinne polkupöydällä. Minä istuin siellä polkupöydällä takapäin. Takapäin. So, Raimo was the one that took me to the school with a bike, and I was sitting at the back of the bike, so riding together. Ja syy, miksi muistan tämän tapauksen hyvin. The reason why I remember that so well. Sinä päivänä, kun sitten kouluun oltiin rekisteröity. So that day when we registered to the school. Minä olin sitten kotimatkalla Raimoossa minulla ensimmä, elämäni ensimmäisen jääsyä. So on the way home, Raimo bought me the first ice cream in my life. <laughs> Eli minun koulu alkoi oikein hyvin. So my school started very well. <laughs> ja koska Raimo oli vanhin meidän perheessä. 
because Raimu was the eldest uh, son in the family, or eldest in the family. So uh, automatically he was a leader in their in their sibling, with those siblings. So he got a very good schooling to be a leader. Sometimes we younger siblings were not uh, agreed with Raimo. So we all other have to be against him before he uh, gave up. <laughs> but I have to say that without those uh, leading uh, um, abilities of rival, Many of us would have uh, had a different kind of life. So uh my dad gave all those uh, um, homework. Short. Short. Uh, yeah, okay. So we learned to uh, learn to do as a young uh, what we have to do. And then playtime was later. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy that I had, thankful that I have uh, the problem I find. Even though our our ways apart in 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 um, in the sense of uh, um, like you know that Raimo was moving to be pretty school and he was living in in um, Ontario. That's what he means. Yeah. So we were not meeting very often, very seldom. We met each other. So it was maybe bad or maybe good. <laughs> I remember when Ryan was moving from Finland to Canada, uh, he moved one year later than I. So he was living uh, with my, me and my wife uh, in one room apartment about one year. So those people who know Raimo, you know what it was. <laughs> but we never fight. So, but we ended always with a could uh, could cheer part. <laughs> oh boys, uh, you could see yeah, well we can see that that way too. Yeah. So now when Raimo is in that little box or whatever what is left of Raimo. It's not going to be very long when same thing happens to me. Because we nobody are here forever. So that's why it's good to be always ready. And also to know where we are going. I know, I know that why we knew that. He is now in the better place. No pains and no, uh, no, um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Of course, 
first family, family, family will know their um, Three for last. Last, I mean. Me, jotka sen elämään. And those who believe in their eternal life. Me elämme jälleen näkemyksen toivossa. We live um, in the hope of glory and to see each other. Että tämä oli minun muistelma Raimusta, minun vanhemmista veljistä. This was my... Um, memory of uh, Raimo, my eldest, uh, my eldest brother. So there's going to be a um, video um, And uh, uh, he has made that story according to what uh, Raimo has told, told uh, him. And uh, so it's uh, right now or later? Right now. Then we were seeing each other more often, 
And uh, we were sitting quite often in a coffee table and making the world a little bit better place, arranging things in a church, and arranging things in a here and there. You know how it is, you know. And uh, I remember that Raimo had two favorite topics. He was always talking about very good ones. How the church elders has to take care of the flock. And that was example. Not whipping them behind, but to be an example. The other one was how the church should be governed. And he learned in Finland, Finnish way, the Pentecostal church, the way how the church would be covered. And that was a little bit different way the Canadians are doing. And in Kiniman, he tried to get the church to understand that the best way is the Finnish way. But little by little, he learned the Canadian way and figured out that uh, I think it's as well good and even better maybe the Finnish way. There's few things, things. I don't go to those. <laughs> Raimo was an outdoor person like we see that we saw the pictures and and my husband was more also an outdoor person. So Raimo was climbing, walking, canoeing, going to mountains, hunting, all them things. And uh, and he found Tarmo as like a soulmate uh, and they were doing all those same activities. Sometimes he said that he would have uh, expect to get a little bit more response from my husband's side. And the reason to it, it my husband was wild personality and the listener. And it was a great loss to Raimo when my husband went to be with the Lord 18 and a half years ago. Of course, it was great loss to our family too. Quite often, when we were going to store with Maria, we had a place we go to store every time Maria comes to uh, Surrey or or whenever we meet, we go to the stores. Raimo told us, don't buy anything. <laughs> so, um, like you know, Raimo was not a shopper. And he lived by what he said. So once I remember, my daughter who is here um, was in our house and we were looking on old pictures. And he looked Raimo and said, Raimo, you have that same pink shirt on. You had it in this picture that is taken 30 years ago. <laughs> Raimo said, no, I don't think so. Then we realized, yes, that was the same shirt. And we had a good laugh. And sometimes when we were talking, I challenge Raimo quite often, and sometimes I said straight, now Raimo, you are talking nonsense. And Raimo looked at me and laughed. He never got mad at me. So it was, it was his personality, like his brother said, that they were disagreeing sometimes, not agreeing all the time, but he never got mad. He was just laughing. And every time he left my place, he took my hand and shake it and said, you are just like a sister to me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And I felt the same way that he was like a brother to me. And it was so sad to see himself, little by little, to deteriorate during the years it was hard for us all, and it was hard for him also. So, I told, I think last week, or I anyway told this to Maria already, that when I saw that Rhino can't remember any more birthdays, Valentine's Days, so I went to the store and bought some cards, and I gave to Rhino. And I, I told him and reminded him, 
Now it's time to give that to Ramari. That was a little sacred. And you understand it was a great privilege to me to be with Maria by the bedside that evening when Ryan went to be with the Lord. I was singing songs and I was praying. I don't know if Ryan heard, if he was still could hear, but we were talking like he could hear. So I told Trino, now when you go up there to heaven, tell Trino greetings, my husband, that we are on the way, we are all coming home one day. Now Trino and Trino, with Jesus, are climbing up the heavenly hills, can kind of with the river of life. No words are needed to understand each of them. Shortcomings are past. Perfection has started. I miss him dearly. God bless you all, family, and all of you.
Thank you for that beautiful music. Uh, appreciate that, Velda. And uh, I enjoyed those pictures, Mark. <laughs> that was excellent to see that. And Esco, who did the narration, I thought I could just almost hear Rymel chuckling behind the scenes. <laughs> uh, it was beautiful to see that and uh, to listen to Rymel's story. And we're so glad that Rymel took the effort to write that down and to uh, record it for us. Um, lots of memories there, and I'm sure you'll, you'll value that over the years. It's my privilege today to uh, turn our attention to uh, the Word of God, and we're grateful for this because God's Word has endured, and it still endures, and it will endure long after uh, we uh, have completed our earthly lives. And so I'm going to read a couple of scriptures this afternoon, and I'm sure these are um, familiar to you. Um, one of them is this classic song that links life and death. It gives us comfort in both life and death. The 23rd Psalm, uh, the old psalm writer of Israel said, The Lord is my shepherd. And as you know, um, the Lord loved to refer to his people as his sheep. And so this is a, a particularly appropriate for uh, uh, sheep and shepherds and people who see that the Lord is our shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And this is the line I'd like us to remember today. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mario and uh, Rival enjoyed the 103rd Psalm. I'd like to read a few verses of it. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins, and heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your years with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And one short verse from John's Gospel, chapter 14, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. I am going there to prepare a place for you. May God add his blessing to his word today. Good visits at his home here in Gibsons, and occasionally Mario and Rhino would come up to Earl's Cove, where we were living, uh, for a visit with us. And I remember one day in particular, uh, sitting there looking out over Agamemnon Channel, and Rhino turned to me and he said, I envy you. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, I like this. <laughs> And as we looked out on the trees and uh, the forest and the ocean, I thought, well, Rival and I have got something in common. We both enjoyed uh, the beauties of this Sunshine Coast. So Rival and I had a few visits together. Uh, the last visit that I remember at your home, Mario, uh, was one afternoon in March, and I think it was about two years ago. And uh, that day, Rival showed me his sauna. And then he took me and showed me this rustic map of Finland, including the region that he had known as a boy. And it was good to hear Rival recalling uh, the things and the people that he loved. I enjoyed my time with Rival. And that day he's, he said to me what he had said other times before. He says, I married a nurse, and that was the best thing I ever did. <laughs> She has taken such good care of me. <laughs> and that's what Rival said to me on more than once, and I enjoyed hearing it every time he said it. 
as we know, Rimo's uh, memory, his, his backward look was broken following the stroke that he had. Sometimes our backward look is broken too. But following this stroke, Rimo did not always remember that he had told us the same stories before. And I must say that I loved it and felt I was privileged. Every time Rimo would repeat one of these stories for me, I just felt like I could relax and enjoy the happiness of Rimo as he enjoyed remembering uh, his life and what he has done. But that last afternoon, Mario, the last time I was at your home, I, I thought I would ask Rimo about his forward look. And so I said, Rimo, do you, do you think much about heaven? And Rimo told me two things that day. He said that he used to be an engineering planner, and it was his job to look to the future, to plan what would happen next, whether it's next week or next month or next year, to be looking ahead. And then he said to me, and I, I think sometimes Rimo should have been the preacher, he said to me, it is normal for human beings to plan for tomorrow, so why don't we plan for eternity? And then Rimo repeated to me another story which I had heard before, but this story was actually a little bit of a joke, and except that that day, the last time I was at Rimo's home, uh, it was very connected to our conversation. Rimo said, I remember when I was a young man in Finland. I used to run in the relay races. And he says, and whenever I got to the last lap, I would give it all I had, because I could see the finish line. <laughs> of course, there's a pun here. We know that finish in English does not carry the same punch as finish in Finnish, especially if it's a finish finish, you are finishing. <laughs> and I thought, Rimo, thank you for your good sense of humor. But this was Rimo's way of telling me that he was looking forward to finishing life's greatest grace. Rimo was ready to say with the Apostle Paul, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me in that day, and not only to me, but also to all those who love his appearing. I mentioned earlier that Bible and Mario enjoyed the dead pastor of this church. Set this out here. Rimo and Mario enjoyed the 103rd Psalm. And a few days before Rimo went home, Mario was reading to him Psalm 103. Now, Mario told me that Rimo had not spoken for several days. But when she finished reading Psalm 103, Rimo spoke up. And amazingly, he whispered back to her the first two verses of Psalm 103 perfectly. Praise the Lord, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless and praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And as Rimo concluded, quoting this psalm, he turned to Marga and he said one word, motto, 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 said once. And Marga knew exactly what Rimo meant. Because starting from his high school days, Rimo's motto had been, I oppose. We heard that in Esco's narration uh, today. And as a student, Rimo was sometimes confronted with what he thought were silly propositions, and he liked to say, I oppose. <laughs> I think I could hear Rimo say that. Right. <laughs> but that evening, as he and Mario read together Psalm 103 uh, for the last time, Rimo changed his motto. He said, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless and praise his holy name. Motto. That is Rimo's motto. And Rimo crossed the finish line 
with a forward look. Now, this same forward look is the look which characterized Jesus' final hours with his disciples. John's Gospel tells us that on the night before the crucifixion, Jesus wanted to show them the full extent of his love. He began to wash his disciples' feet, and then he said to them, In my Father's house are many dwelling places, and I am going there to prepare a place for you. Jesus invited his disciples to share in a forward look. And Jesus invites us to share in life's ultimate forward look. The Apostle Paul said, I'm not sure if he had Finnish people or Canadian people in mind, he said, for our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who when He comes, He will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like His glorious body. The forward look. Now there are many things we do not know about heaven, and I, I will refrain from trying to explain it all to you. But the reason that we're confident about heaven is not because of some universal longing in the human soul. Notable though that is, there is a longing in the human soul. We all know it. But the reason that we're confident about heaven is because of the words of Jesus. He said, in my Father's house are many dwelling places and I am going there to prepare a place for you. And the reason we believe Jesus is not just because of what he said, but because of what he accomplished. Many people like to talk about the great teachings of Jesus. But they remain skeptical about what Jesus said about himself and what he said about eternity. And today we have certainty about heaven, not just because of what Jesus said, but because of what he did. Jesus went to the cross. That is a fact of history. But there was no just reason why Jesus should go to the cross. He was not a terrorist. He was not a, a political opponent. He was not trying to undermine the Constitution. There was no reason why Jesus should go to the cross, except one. He who lived a sinless, perfect life went to the cross to take our sin and our failure there and to give his life as a sacrifice for us. And that's what he did. It's not just what Jesus said, but it's what he did. Today we have certainty about heaven because of the resurrection of Jesus. But many people have sought to discredit this, but an examination of the motives and records of the Gospel writers causes the questions to crumble. And Jesus came to earth, he lived and died on the cross for our sin, and he rose again from the grave to tell us that eternal life awaits those who place their trust in Him. Today we have certainty about heaven because of the birth of Jesus. We all love the traditions that we celebrate at Christmas time, but the details all point to one thing. The Apostle Paul said, Jesus laid aside the splendors of heaven. He left behind Him the beauty of eternity and his place with God the Father in heaven and came to this earth, and the birth of Jesus reminds us of this, that Jesus did not originate in Bethlehem. He laid aside the splendors of heaven. You say, well, how do we know that? Well, 
Think about those people who came across this day in Bethlehem. There were those unsuspecting shepherds. Their experience confirms what we're saying. There had apparently been an angel or angels that appeared to them uh, on the hillsides outside Bethlehem. And they said, unto you is born this day in Bethlehem a Savior. The shepherds went to Bethlehem not knowing what they would find there and what did they find there. They found a young mother had just given birth. She had not known any man. They did not know that Mary had been told that the power of the Most High would come upon her and she would give birth to the Son of the Most High. She knew that. They didn't. All they knew was they'd seen angels on the hillside. I don't know how you describe what that would be about, but that was their story. The shepherds did not know that an angel had also appeared to Joseph and he was engaged to Mary, telling him not to be alarmed because Mary had conceived without intimacy with him and that she would give birth to a son who would save his people from their sins. Joseph did not confer with Mary, and Mary did not confer with Joseph, and the shepherds did not confer with them either. And there is a thread running through this. The shepherds going to Bethlehem did not know that Mary's cousin Elizabeth, not knowing herself about Mary's pregnancy, Elizabeth had cried out in amazement when Mary came to visit her and she says, Why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And the shepherds did not know that in a few days' time a group of astrologers from a distant land would fall down and worship this baby. They had been tracking with their calculations an unusual star. And according to their calculations, they believed that it would lead them. I don't understand how this would be. They believed that it would lead them to someone unprecedented in history. That star brought them over hundreds of kilometers of desert sand to the same baby that the shepherds found. And we believe in heaven today, not just because of the words of Jesus, but because of what took place in his life and what he does in our lives. He cleanses us from all sin. He forgives us. Oh, how we need forgiveness in our world. We would forgive one another, but if primarily we would know that we are forgiven all our life failing when we stand before God. He redeems us. He brings us back to something better than we would have made out of ourselves by ourselves. He restores us. And countless evidences could be given as to why we believe what Jesus said. But John summarized this when he said, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples that were not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and by believing in the light in his name. And Rival had the forward look. He said it's normal to plan for our future. So why don't we plan for eternity? What do we know about heaven? We know that God the Father is there. Jesus taught his disciples to pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven. We know that Jesus is, contains a series of visions, which is an amazing subject. And in one of them, John records, I saw a lamb standing in the midst of the throne of God in heaven. The lamb, Jesus Christ. 
Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John said, I saw a Lamb standing in the midst of the throne of God in heaven, and I heard the voices of 10,000 times 10,000 singing, Worthy is the Lamb to receive power and honor and glory and praise. Jesus will be there. What do we know about heaven? The Old Testament believers will be there. Now that's interesting because they all died before the cross. So you say, well, how could the cross of Jesus have been effective for them? They died before the cross, and Hebrews is very blunt about it. It says these all died in faith, not having received the promises. Sometimes we die in faith, too. They died in faith, not having received the promises. Therefore, says God, has prepared a heavenly city for them. And I believe, I know, that every believer will be there. These are some things we know about heaven. Every believer will be there. The scripture that we love, you know, so well says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. We also have instructions about how to get there. We know who will be there. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We believe what Jesus said. And we're encouraged to know what he did. The question today, of course, is, will each of us be there? Will we be there? The question is, what do you do with Jesus? Do you receive him or do you spurn him? We have this choice. The Bible said it's normal to plan ahead. It's normal to plan for eternity. We need solid ground on which to stand, and we have it in the death and resurrection of Jesus. He is our certainty and our hope. He did something on the cross to redeem our burdens, redeem us to God. And we know that we have a future in Him that can never pass away. One last scripture today. Paul said, Listen, brothers, he's talking to his friends. He says, Listen, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It's amazing. We often think that somehow by the currency of time we can buy an ounce or two of heaven. The Apostle Paul said, listen, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We need something other than human effort to cross that great divide. I don't know quite how you would like to explain heaven. And I don't think I'll take the time to tell you what I think about heaven today. Except that heaven is very real. Heaven is eternal. God has made us to know him in this life and in the next life. And that's the connection. We know him here. And we will know him in the life to come. And Rival, <laughs> we heard him say it. He says, I want to cross the finish line. He was looking for that future home that awaits us as we place our trust in the Lord. And this afternoon, I'd just like to say that we can have confidence, as Ryan did, that we can place our trust and faith in the Lord Jesus, as Ryan did, and we can have confidence that we will be forever with the Lord. And that's a wonderful so, will you take Brown's words for advice and say it's normal? It's normal to prepare for tomorrow. Let's also be prepared for eternity. Open our hearts to Jesus and say, Come in, Lord Jesus. Be my Savior, be my Lord. I will walk with you and I will talk with you. It doesn't mean we'll be perfect, by the way. But we'll trust Him.
Thank you, Pastor Dave. This moment, I'd like to invite uh, Weldon Ann from Jim McGowan as well to come and pray for us in London.
Thank you, John. At this time, we're going to have an open mic, and I'd like to invite Gail Johnson to please come. Please come here. Thank you. There's someone that really made, means a lot to Rival, always meant a lot to Rival, and that's Dylan. I can remember since I've known Rival over the years, you talked about Dylan. 
I don't know whether he ever changed it from Billy, Billy to Dylan, or maybe he did. But uh, I know that he had such a big love for Dylan. It was so exciting when they went to to Finland together. I really remember his, uh, you know, he didn't like, uh, he, he thought television was a waste of time. And he certainly thought uh, this American football was, well, ridiculous. You know, <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. So those are a couple of memories that I have.
and I do, and I often think of him. I did ask him if he'd like a drive, but oh no, because he had to walk. And so I'll always remember that about him. He, he was passionate about his engines. Thank you. Is there anyone else here? I'd like to invite the musicians. Yes. I'm John here, and every Sunday morning when we come into the entrance of the church, uh, our rhyme would be there waiting for him. And we'd shake hands, and he'd shake and shake and shake, and he had quite a grip on him. But uh, he would say, well, you know what, it's just like pumping water out of a well, because our arms are going up like this all the time. And, and then we talked about him hiking and stuff, and, he often wondered if I'd ever come down to Gibson's and hike with him. And when I met him in, in the Martin's Coffee Shop a few times, we had coffee together. But you know, we never did come down here and hike with him. But I know there's going to be a day when we all be hiking with him. And that day is coming real soon. there are many, many memories that you all have. And you'll share those memories following our time together here. You'll share those memories in the days ahead with one another. And it is true. For those that are in faith, we will see one more again. And we will walk with Him. We will walk with Jesus. I'd like to invite the musicians to come up, please. You open your program, you'll see great as thy faithfulness.
few weeks of time, the earth and remains of our friend Rymal will be returned to the forest floor. And we're going to tell us what's up to Rymal Fort Miller. And in anticipation of that, we will not all be there to see that, but in anticipation of that, we're going to conclude today with the words of our Lord Jesus, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who lives and believes in me, though he may die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And the Apostle Paul wrote these words to Timothy. He said, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Job, in his profound grief, also said, the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And since then, it's pleased Almighty God to take unto Himself our departed rival, the departed. We therefore give thanks to the Lord for the body in which rival lived, the body that was prepared for Him. And we give thanks to the Lord that it was in this earthly life that rival tasted of the grace of God. He tasted of the knowledge of his God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it was in his earthly body that Rymel also was looking forward to the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose coming, the scripture says, in glorious majesty, the earth and the sea will give up their dead, and the mortal bodies of those who place their trust in him will be changed and made like unto his own glorious body. Let us join together in a word of prayer. So our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son. And we thank you today for the gift you gave to us in Rymel. We ask, Lord, that you would comfort, sustain Maria, Stephen, Stephanie, Dylan, Jack, Jacob, and Lev, and all the family members, whether in Finland or here today. Lord, we ask that you'd enable us by faith to look forward to that day when we will all be gathered together around the throne of God forever to be with the Lord. And so now we give thanks and praise. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, guide and keep each of us each day, faithful, following, trusting in Him. Amen. Just a moment, the musicians are going to come and pray the Lord's Prayer. Prior to that, I'd like to just make a few announcements following our time together. We will be having a fellowship tea in the foyer, and there will be some items here as well. And I want to just say thank you on behalf of Mario and Partner family. We wish to just convey their thanks in celebrating and remembering Ryan today. Your thoughtful time they help us really appreciate it. Thank you. So following the Lord's Prayer, we invite you to stay in heaven and fellowship together and share some more of those great stories. 